There's this bizarre thing that happens with parents and schools and their kids who are struggling. I've seen it many, 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 many times, way too many times. And here's how it goes. Basically, the parents are trying to get some sort of accommodations for their child. They know that their child is struggling. But the child is what I call a child in the gray zone. And a child in the gray, gray zone, well, I'll, I'll read this email to you and you'll understand. So this is an email from a mom named Beth. Hey, Seth, heard about you on the Tilt Parenting Podcast. By the way, if you don't follow Debbie Reaver's Tilt Parenting Podcast, it's amazing. Anyhow, she says, my son is in sixth grade and having so much trouble with organization. He has ADHD and high anxiety and is highly sensitive to boot. But the school will not grant him a 504 because he is, quote, too smart but his grades are slipping from a's to b's and b's to c's because he has many missing and late assignments etc looking forward to perusing your stuff thanks in advance so um i this is one of those kids in the gray area the, the school says he's too smart like he he can't get help he can't get accommodations so schools um have a lot of hoops to jump through in order for your child to get the help that they need. And this can be very troublesome on many levels. So in this case, we have a parent who says, I know my kid needs help. Please help us. And they're saying we can't because of whatever red tape or whatever rules or whatever perceptions we have. So what do you do? Now, there are many variations on this. Um, sometimes disabilities can mask gifts. Sometimes gifts can mask disabilities. This is a big 2E issue a lot of times. With asynchronous development, you can learn more about 2E um, in order to know what I'm talking about that, the twice exceptional students. But either way, kids in the gray zone, kids where it's very difficult to tangibly see what's going on, uh, clearly this kid needs help with executive function. And what's going to happen is this kid was in sixth grade when the mom wrote this to me. What's going to happen is that this kid is going to be in situations in middle and high school where the teacher says you just or society or culture or the school is going to send the messages to this kid. You're just not motivated. You need to motivate yourself. You need to be more disciplined. You need to try harder. You need to work harder. Uh, whatever the messages are, these are messages that don't take into consideration that there are legitimate executive function struggles that are going on that need to be addressed compassionately with good systems. The kid needs to be taught systems. He doesn't. They're not coming um, naturally to this kid like they do with kids who have very strong executive function naturally. Um, he's not picking up on the systems. He's going to get feel beaten down. He's going to feel like he's working hard and people aren't seeing the effort that he's putting in. And he's going to feel like, why do I even try so hard? And anyhow, this is the type of thing that I see a lot. So it is the beginning of the school year. It's late July and school's going to be starting soon. And if you have a student in this gray area who's going through this and you don't have formal services, here's my advice to you. One, be the squeaky wheel advocate for your child don't stop advocating you know advocate to the teachers directly advocate to the school counselor advocate to the principal the administration um keep advocating and keep trying number two what you want to do is you want to um, communicate with teachers as to what's going on and you want to be proactive. It is the beginning of the school year, so you want to be proactive. What does that look like? Well, here is one great tip that I have for you. So email all of your child's teachers. Say, hey, what's up? We don't have a 504 or an IP or whatever, but I do want you to know um, about how you can be of service to my child. Most teachers, the vast majority of teachers are teachers because they care about kids. People who stay teachers are not burnout out yet, hopefully. Um, but, you know, people who become teachers want to be of service to kids. 
And um, so that's their intention, but they don't always understand executive function or what's going on beneath what I call iceberg theory, beneath the tip of the iceberg, what's really going on uh, that's impacting this student. So what you want to do is email the teachers proactively at the beginning of the school year and say, hey, what's up? Thank you so much for all that you do. We're really excited for you to be our kid's teacher this year. I want you to know a couple things about my kid. Keep these letters as brief and short and bulleted as possible. Do not write mega paragraphs, parents. These teachers have a lot on their plates. They get a lot of email. They, they need their time for planning. They need their time for grading. They need their time for the things that they have to do um, to be a great teacher. So please keep them short and bulleted into the point. But assume the best. Assume that the teacher is on your kid's side um, and say, hey, what's up? Here's a couple things you might want to know about my kid. My kid struggles with something called executive function. You can link out to an executive function article like one on my site or a YouTube video or whatever. Um, but my kid struggles with something called executive function, which means that they um, legitimately have trouble getting things done and with working memory or however you want to articulate it. Keep it brief. And say, then say, here are three things you can do to uh, help my child or to support my child. And frame it in such a way where you're on the same team and you're saying, look, we don't have documentation for this, but I want to tell you what works with my kid. These are some things that work. One, um, having notes ahead of time or letting us know ahead of time what's, what is going to be on the notes, that will help us. Two, um, when you post your online grades, posting them in a timely manner or letting the, us know the schedule. Like if you if you update your grades every Friday or every two weeks, you know, some sort of consistency because this is a huge problem is the online communication um, saying, you know, hey, when you post article or when you post homework assignments online, could you please be exhaustively detailed the first time and link out any PDFs so that we don't have to bug you um, for this stuff a million times and waste your time. So you're telling them in a really nice way some things that a lot of times teachers aren't aware how hard it is to navigate the online stuff or they're not aware um, that just offering notes to students uh, even though they may not have an accommodation is helpful so anyhow i just threw out a couple examples but the point is to say hey here's a couple of things that would support our child just tell them the truth about what would be supportive to you what you need in order to help keep it short i cannot emphasize that enough shoot these emails out and and then um you might want to say hey please send me a reply just letting me know you got this you don't have to say anything else just let me know you got this because again they are busy and to craft a long email to you um really is going to cut into their time for doing what they need to do but you do want to uh, be acknowledged that hey yeah okay i hear this now understand parents that teachers especially in middle and high school at the beginning of the year they may have 50 75, 100, they may have more students than you can even imagine. They may not even know your kid's name for weeks. They have so many people. Um, so be understanding of that. Like really put yourself in the teacher's shoes as to the dynamics they're dealing with and how many kids they have, how little time they have with them each day or each week um, and stuff like that. And so just say, hey, just shoot me a quick reply that says, hey, I got this and we're good. And you might also finally say this, hey, I'm going to resend this in a couple weeks just to keep it at the top of your mind. You can delete it when you get it. Anyhow, my recommendation is send it a couple weeks later, send it a couple weeks later, send it a couple weeks later. Why? Just when you send it, just say, hey, what's up? I'm resending the thing I sent a couple weeks ago. The reason is, is I know that you're busy and I know that it takes a while to get to know these kids. So I just want to make this easy on you. Thank you so much for everything you do. Boom, send it out. So you want to keep, keep sending it because the teacher's not going to read it one time and remember it at the beginning of the year. It's going to take a while for it to sink in. It's the way you resend it to them and make them know that you're on the same team, that you're not attacking them, that you're and that you don't expect a big reply or anything, um, that we're in the business of helping a kid get what they need. Anyhow, parents, I hope that was helpful to you.
I don't even know if I introduced myself. My name is Seth Perler with SethPerler.com. I'm an executive function coach based out of Boulder, Colorado, and I help struggling students navigate this thing called education. If you haven't signed up for my updates, SethPerler.com, I send an update every week to families, parents of struggling students. And um, please hit the thumbs up if you're watching me here on YouTube and subscribe on YouTube. That supports my work. Uh, and leave a comment. What do you do to help these kids that are in the gray area? What can parents or teachers or the professionals do to help these kids who are in the gray area don't have formal documentation but have legitimate needs for support? Take care.